Good morning. We celebrate this day, the second Sunday in this season of Advent. I invite you to stand as you're able, and we turn to our order for confession and forgiveness. It begins on page 94. And we'll use the uh, left-hand column. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation. Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn is hymn number 631. Love divine, all love's excelling joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, for unfounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation. Enter every trembling heart. Breathe, O oh, breathe, thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit. Let us find thy promised rest. Take away the love of sinning, Alpha and Omega be. In the faith as its beginning, Set our hearts at liberty. Come, Almighty, to deliver, Let us all 
my life receive. Suddenly he return and never, never more my temples leave. Thee we would be always blessing, serve thee as thy horse above. Pray and praise without ceasing, glory in thy perfect love. Finish then my new creation, pure and spotless, let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place. Till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder of and praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen, amen. The Lord be with you. And we turn to our bulletin as we pray together our prayer of the day. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
spirit your God. The Lord God comes with you, and his arm rules him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arm and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother to sleep. Praise God for Thanks be to God. O oh God, be like the stepping candle of Adam. Here we go. Yeah, that'll be fine. We seek your comfort, both mighty and tender, you come. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you. Isaiah announced God's coming to a people exiled in a broken and parched wilderness. He declared that God's redemption would make a highway in the desert and change the rough places into plains. God would come as a shepherd, feeding, leading, and cradling the weary flock. This advent we seek such a God. Saving God, look upon your world and heal your land and your people. Prepare us to be changed. This Advent, teach us to be tender and just as you are. Amen. If you turn to the second verse of hymn number 671, Shine, Jesus, Shine, we'll sing the refrain, the verse, and then the refrain. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me. Shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Play, Spirit, plays. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Our psalm today is Psalm 85. You would turn to that. We'll uh, read responsibly by whole verse, starting with verse 1, verse 2, and then 8 to 13. Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sin. And at verse 8, I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. 
and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord and shall prepare for God a pathway. A second reading from Second Peter. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like one day. The Lord is not slow about His promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed, since all these things are to be dissolved in this way. What sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with His promise, we wait for a new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by Him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. So also, our beloved brother Paul wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him. The Gospel of our, the Word of our Lord. And thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark in the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locust and wild honey. And he proclaimed, The one is who, more, who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus. And praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, I asked Maggie if she wanted to come up and, uh, or me to come down to her, so I'm coming down to her at her request. She is the princess and queen of the, of the month. <laughs> All right, today we're talking about repentance. Have you ever heard that word, repent? Okay, let's figure it out. Uh, you've never done anything wrong, have you? Yeah, I thought not. You just did right then. You just lied. Then you just lied right to me, your pastor. No, I'm just kidding you. Uh, we all do things that are wrong, and that and we know what that's called. It's called a little word, S-I-N. We sin, right? Yeah, we sin. And sometimes we do it not even knowing we're doing it. We say things, and we wish we didn't say them after we'd said them because they weren't nice or mean. We, we do things that we're not even in control of sometimes, and they hurt other people, or they, they don't do things right for the world. And um, the Scripture suggests that we ought to deal with that stuff. And the Word suggests that we do it in a very simple way. That we first confess, and that means we say, I messed up, I really did wrong, I'm sorry. But you know, sorry is not enough. Sorry is good if somebody's hurt. But you know, if somebody's hurt or upset, the next step is to repent. And that is to do this. I'm doing things wrong, and I know, 
I shouldn't be doing that. So what do I do? I turn around. I go the opposite way. I change what I'm doing. I try and make up for what I did wrong. So, so Jesus would teach us that, yes, we should let people know that we're, we've hurt them or we've done things wrong, but then we ought to fix it and not do it again, right? Right. You can't just keep doing that. I had an old guy in my church up in Maryland, and he said, I love being a Lutheran because I know I can come to church every Sunday and I can confess my sins and you, pastor, are going to forgive me. I said, I'm not forgiving you. God's going to forgive you. And then I can go home and I can keep doing it again. And I can come back next week. Uh Uh-uh, Tom, that is not what it's about. We need to change, and that's what repentance is. It's changing our mind, changing our hearts, and changing our actions toward each other. So that's what Advent is about. Here's this guy named John, and he's out in the wilderness, and he's calling people, you've got to get ready. We have to get ready because something wonderful is coming. God is coming to live among us, and we better be ready. Well, we know God came and lived among us, didn't he? What was his name? Baby Jesus, who became big Jesus, right? Yeah, and he died for our sins. You know all of that story. But he went to heaven to be with God forever, and he said, I'm coming back. So we're in those days where we're waiting for Jesus to come back. And the best way for Jesus to come back is for us to get our lives together, to repent, to change our ways, and make a better pathway for Him coming. So that's what we're called to do as we get ready for Christmas. Change our ways, do better than what we did before, get ready for not baby Jesus to come, but Jesus from on high to descend to earth and make things right forever and bring us to His kingdom. Make sense a little bit? Thank you for listening. Let's listen. I probably took a hymnal and laid... Oh, I've got it right here. I'll need that for later. And let us pray. O Lord our God, may the words of our mouths and meditations upon our hearts Be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You know, cartoons, I don't don't get a Sunday paper anymore. It's just all advertisements and very little to it. But I loved Sunday because it had the comics. And I miss my comics. There was an old one with two little characters, and they were known as Calvin and Hobbes. Well, here's a little scenario. Calvin says to his friend Hobbes, I feel bad that I called Susie names and I hurt her feelings. I'm really sorry I did that. And then maybe you should apologize to her? Well, Calvin suggested to Hobbes as he thought it over and pondered for a few moments. He said, yeah, that would probably be the right thing, but I keep hoping there's a more obvious solution rather than just saying sorry. Restoration, renewal, repentance. Key watchwords for Advent. Calvin and Hobbes, like many other cartoons, they take a more humorous jab at what we are all about as people. One of our chief failings as humans is that we are human. And boy, is that a mess some days. We don't have the advantage of the lower species who mainly operate on instinct and survival. Their way of dealing with problems and conflict is either to run the other way and save their rears or to engage in a fight till the death or one gives up. We can do that too. When attacked or offended, they immediately respond by either those two things. But of course, we know people have those abilities too. But God gave us some higher senses and abilities to do things differently than just the animal kingdom might do. We can run, and we can pout, and we can act hurt, and we can solicit sympathy. That might be one action. We can hide our feelings and choose to not deal with them until one day 
we lash out at somebody unexpected because we never dealt with it when it happened. We can fight more viciously and hurtfully than any animal species. We can name call and backstab and malign and reject and shun and bring up the past. We can feel that we are sorry and know that we should do something to make things right and feel sorry and do nothing more than that. We, as well, can keep hoping that there are, is a less obvious solution than the one that is the right one. Or we could just put some real flesh on those words, I'm sorry, and repent. Why is repentance a key word in Advent? Advent's a time in which we focus on preparedness, preparing for something that is going to take place and getting ready for it. Part of getting ready for a new thing is dealing first with the old stuff that needs to be resolved and dealt with. To make a way through the wilderness of life, most of us need to address the things that we have done or are still doing so we are best fit for the kingdom that God wants to give us. Because that kingdom needs better people than we are some days. So John the Baptist, 2,000 years ago, help people decide how that should be done when he called them to leave the wilderness by repenting, turning in a new direction. I'm sure most of us are deeply saddened by what's taking place in Israel, in God's supposed holy land. Hamas's attack and taking the lives of 1,200 people and also taking hostages solicited a pretty strong response from Israel who needed to defend themselves. The sad part of that, in the past couple of months, that's brought the death of over 17,000 people in Gaza. And we know there are innocents among that as you try to weed out the wheat and the tarot. Remember that little parable? The weeds are sown in the wheat field, and what does Jesus say? We leave them alone and separate them at the end. Well, that separating is difficult among peoples. And that war continues. When is enough enough? This is a difficult situation because Hamas has described its goal as simply to destroy Israel. Well, if someone came and said that to us, I think we would put up the defenses as well and protect ourselves, and that is right and good. But sadly enough, there are thousands of innocents who are fleeing and had homes destroyed, lives lost. It's also very predictable. It's our human way. Each side has fallen into a deadly cycle of retribution against the other. Each feels they've been offended and hurt. There is probably the underlying sentiment on the part of some to feel sorry for the deaths and destruction, yet each side lives with the expectation that their actions will trigger probably an equal and opposite reaction. Neither side is willing to perhaps do the godly thing, to end that terror and tragedy, to repent, to change things in that land. Repent. It begins with, I'm sorry, and it is acted upon more obvious ways, doing something positive about what went on between those involved. Israel and Palestinian troubles are as old as the nation of Israel. Hatred can probably be rooted back to ancient Israel's conquest centuries before when they took back the land that was promised to them. And that began in the year 1948. Well, you see, in the times of their absence, there were people living there and homes were taken and land was taken back because it was their land. God had given it to them. But someone came after their homes of the others that were residents there. Each side laid claim to what was, they thought, their own. This, of course, is a pretty simple view of a complex issue. The sad part is that there is no reason why two groups of people could not live some way side by side in mutual respect and support of the other. But for there to be a lasting hope and a peace, there must first be repentance on all parts. 
And the key stumbling block to repentance is that need to change. That's the hard part. Another observation of history and of the human animal is that we have an uncanny ability to look quickly to others to fix our problems for us. The psalmist prayed to God in these words. Give the king your justice, O Lord God, your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to your people. Throughout the scripture, people have always turned to God to fix their problems and make it right. Give this, give that to the kings. Bring your justice. What's missing in that equation? Our own accountability for that. We can pray that the Lord would give us the things that we believe God wants to give us. Righteousness, justice, peace, prosperity. But we need to order also our lives according to God's will for us and implement those things in our day-to-day living. We need to set aside those things which just seem to be as instinctual as fight or flight are to animals. To put aside things like hatred and envy and animosity and greed, my way or the highway. And when we want to restore our relationship with God, we need to remember that God has a liking for the obvious solution, change on our part too. I'd like to use another image to talk about repentance, and that's the image of going home. All of us will eventually go home, to our homes, wherever they may be. If we're at work, we go home. If we're at school, we eventually end up at home. Home is often a final destination where we end up after those things. But biblically, home is considered the kingdom of God. And that's a place we all want to be someday, where the Lord rules and where the God wants to gather us in. But because of sin, we live somewhat as exiles. Those who have either been taken away from home because of sin on our part, or removed from our homes by another. You know what happened to Adam and Eve? They had it all. They had the best home possible, if you could imagine what paradise would be. They lost it because of their sin, and they couldn't go back. What a tragedy. We're still waiting to get back to Eden. In 587 B.C., the last of the leaders and the peoples of Israel were taken from their homes, all that were able-bodied, leaving only the sick and the impoverished back in the land we call holy and taken to Babylon. And for there for 70 years, that was their home, removed from the home that God had promised, exiles from their land. World War II, some of you may know this piece of history, it's a sad part of that terrible war, is that after Pearl Harbor, which was just observed this past week, when uh, the Japanese bombed that place and over 2,000 lives were lost on ships that were bombed there, World War II broke out. You know what happened pretty soon in this country? They rounded up Japanese Americans. This had been their home for a long, long time and they put them in internment camps. There was no trial. There were no hearings. They just rounded them up. Benita went to school with a young girl named Lisi Katayama. Lisi hadn't been born at that time, but her parents had, and they lived in Virginia. Lisa's mother was taken to an intern camp out west. Her father, or her soon, when she would be born, her husband, was in fact serving in the United States Army, a Japanese American fighting the Japanese overseas. That's what we did. It happens. Away from home. Restoration. That's the goal. All because they resembled an enemy that we were scared to death of. 
And I think the same thing happened with German Americans. People changed their names just to protect themselves. Another form of exile is self-exile. That was John the Baptist. He left family, friends, he left the city, he went into the wilderness, and there he called people to do what they needed to do to change and repent. You saw how he lived when you heard the gospel today, very simply. People had exiled themselves from God, and he called them back to God. And how? Let's get back home by changing. His voice cried out in the wilderness, calling the people to come out of their exile of sin and get ready to get home. Repent. The kingdom of heaven has come. Bear fruit that is worthy of repentance. A literal translation of repent I shared with you earlier to turn around. But in turning around, we do one more thing. We head toward home. For today's purpose, home is the place we know is truly right for us as the people of God. It is a life that is fashioned after God's kingdom. We know that when we sin, when we do those things in our life that are wrong in our relationships with each other and with God, that there is a stumbling block to getting to that home. Those of us who are, are married or have been can remember the day when everything was right and good between our spouses. It was that honeymoon period. It sometimes lasts long and sometimes it was over quickly. It is usually the benchmark that we should, in principle, be aiming for in our relationship to get along when it gets out of kilter. Repentance has to do with returning to that place in our lives when things were right, going back maybe to the good old days, which means taking a new direction. You see, John pointed the way, and it was toward someone who was coming into the world, and we have known him to be Jesus, the Christ of God. And that's a wonderful eye to keep, uh, to keep our eye upon. Friends, I, I doubt if there is anyone among us who are believers in Jesus Christ that don't want to get home someday. John was like a travel agent who offered advice, he offered suggestions, he offered a route in which we would go, and it had to do with following what Jesus would soon proclaim to this world. He called us to go this way and not that way. And then Jesus prepared the way through his life, his death, his resurrection, and ascension. And our role is simply to make a choice. The people of Jerusalem and all of Judea were going out to John and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. That was a good beginning. The return home is rooted in recognizing that we are away from home, recognizing that we desire perhaps to be in a different place than the present. To get there, we need to get down to the river down to the river to our own baptism. Not to be rebaptized every time we've messed up, every time we sin. We don't do that as Lutherans. What God did once is good for all time. But Luther would suggest that daily we revisit our baptism by being mindful of what has happened, confessing the same, repenting, and looking to that gift of salvation that came to us in those wars. Confession is acknowledgement that we are perhaps in the wrong place that's not home. And to get to the right place, we start by repenting. Start on the right road that will lead to the kingdom. And we do so by correcting the offense against God and neighbor and not doing it again and again and again. We can say, I'm sorry all day long. And how sincere is that sorrow? without some change or doing something right. But the call to repentance is to make things different in one's life for the better. We're in the season of getting ready in lots of different ways. We need to prepare because we don't know when the Son of Man will return. That's the wondrous mystery of the Gospels. 
but He promises that He will. And today, the Word of God offers a step in the right direction for preparedness, repentance. Examine your own life as I need to do my own. Heed the call of John and the words of one Sir Thomas Fuller who wrote this, You cannot repent too soon because you do not know how soon it may be too late. Are you ready? Amen. Let's go to hymn number 249. I had the wrong number in there, so I hand corrected it. It's right on the board, 249. And I invite you to stand as you're able. Now, this is a familiar Advent hymn about John. <clears throat> on, jo on Jordan's banks, the Baptist Christ announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings of the King of kings. Then cleanse be every life from sin, make straight the way for God within, and let us all our hearts prepare for Christ to come and enter there. We hail you as our Savior, Lord, our refuge and our great reward. Without your grace we waste away like flowers that wither and decay. <coughs> Stretch forth your hand, our health restore, and make us rise to fall no more. Go let your face upon us shine and fill the world with love divine. All praise to you, eternal Son, whose advent has our freedom won, whom with the Father we adore and Holy Spirit evermore. We turn to our hymnal for our profession of faith, sharing the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And join me in prayer. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayer for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Send forth your faithful people with words of promise and forgiveness. Teach your church to be bold in revealing your good news in word and in deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reveal your majesty in mountain peaks, flowing rivers, blossoming wilderness roads. Heal the earth where it longs for renewal. Bring wholeness to the earth and all of its creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn the hearts of the nations toward righteousness and peace. Increase cooperation for justice between countries, commonwealths, political parties, diplomatic leaders. In times of prosperity, direct leaders to be generous for the sake of all. 
We pray for peace in Gaza, in Ukraine, between all who are at war with one another, that it might be a true sign to the world of your coming again to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort your people with tender words of love and healing. Surround all who are grieving, all who know depression or anxiety, all who feel lonely or forgotten. Be steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. We pray your healing presence for Judy, for Evelyn and Evelyn and James, for Miriam, for Gail, Jenny and Linda, Tom and Nikki and Lisa, for Nancy, Roger and Hunter, for Donna, for Elaine, for Maggie, for Katie and Mark, for Katie and Julia, for Barry and Wendy, and for all who we hold precious and dear to us, remembered in, the mo in this moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant holy patience to all who are waiting during this season. Give hope to those seeking employment. Bring reassurance to people awaiting new diagnoses or treatment. Protect expectant parents. Watch with those who keep bedside vigil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And with you a thousand years is like a day. Bless the memory of the saints from ages past and the anticipation of saints yet to be born. Inspire us to live with faith as we await your new heaven and your new earth. For into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, that all God's people say amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. God's blessings. Peace be with you, my friends. We share the presence that we have of Christ who is with us in bread and wine, and we do so by uh, preparing our communion and doing so with our offertory prayer, which you'll find printed in your bulletin. And together we pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world, signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, to our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. My friends, our Lord Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, he took some bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup. And when he had supped and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it. For this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you. It's shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, all is prepared, come, share in his presence. The table is open, please come forth. Vanessa, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ, it's given for you. This is the body of Christ, it's given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ, darling, it's given for you. And the body of Christ is given for you. Death, this is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed 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 for you. Blood of Christ, it shed for you. Blood of Christ, it shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace, His mercy, and love now and forever. Amen. Depart in His peace. This is the body of Christ. And in your bulletin, you'll find our post-communion prayer. And together we pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have a, a couple of updates on, on people that we're, of course, missing. Um, I went this week and uh, saw Judy. Uh, she had just had a procedure uh, uh, of a surgery. Uh, and her condition, you, you know, may have known that she had fallen and broken her wrist here. She'd have multiple falls elsewhere. And they finally found out why she was having that. She had fluid built up on her brain and it wasn't draining properly as it does through our spinal column. So they went in and they tried to do a, a stent in her spine or a shunt to drain that, and she had too much calcium, they couldn't get into the bone. So they put it in behind her ear and channeled it down through and into her stomach. 
She was a different person when I saw her after surgery. Her mind was clear. She was not confused at all. She knew what had happened. She hadn't gotten up to walk around yet, but she was going to be going home. Uh, and that was Thursday. She was to go home the next day. So, yep, it, uh, walk them off. So she is doing good uh, and hopeful that, you know, that will take care of the problem. Uh, mystery of the body, I tell you. Miss Evelyn has had bronchitis and pneumonia and is recovering from that. She wants to get it going, but you don't want her to get going too fast, right? So we're missing her and James' parents, uh, and uh, but they're on the recovery. And Dad is okay. Dad is fine. Dad is fine. He's excellent, huh? Oh, excellent. Of course, how else would James be? Oh, my gosh. Then uh, let's see. Uh, you can share your news about your daughter or son. Oh, my daughter's getting married. Getting married. In Vegas, so I'll be flying out tomorrow. Vegas. But I'll be back. <laughs> if she wants to have a little church blessing after the fact, we'd be glad to do that, too. Yeah. Yeah. But she's not in this area, yeah, is she? She's in Oh, they're for now. I can go there too. I have no problem. They'll be here. Okay, cool. Uh, and mom is doing about the same, Hunter. Uh, still doing therapy at home. If somebody comes in. Okay. Okay. They get her up in the wheelchair some. Right, but oh, okay. But each day she's out of the bed for a little while. Okay, good. We'll continue to hold all those people in prayer. Um, magical things happen when you're away. A tree appeared. That's all good. Thank you, Jeff, and others have helped. And I think we probably got to decorate it at some point. What do we say next week after church, or do you have a plan? Are oh, you gonna work on it today? Then we'll stay and work on it today. We have sad news. Uh oh. We all know that Lisa Shapiro has passed away. Passed away two weeks before the barbecue. Oh. Um, we thought that Tom, um, Tom's sister in law. Oh. And we thought that Tom Lisa. Lisa. Tell us about it. No. Oh, my goodness. I did not know. I, I thought she was the best of the three of them. Yeah, she was taken. Oh my! She almost died in her. She was in there for cancer. Oh, okay. She passed away. Okay. Well, they need your prayers and phone calls and yeah. whatever you do. Okay, Lisa, Tom, and Nikki. Huh? Yeah. Oh, and he is. They are so private. I can't even get into their house to go see them. So, but that's how people are. We respect that. But hold them in prayer and let them know. A call won't hurt. Tom will talk to you. He'll talk to you. He does. He does. So give Tom a call. So we're going to stay a little bit afterwards and uh, put some chrismons up and uh, take care of that if anybody wants to and is able to stay. Okay. Okay. Thirty um, first, we're gonna have to have a private. Right. Okay, so we're giving notice of that. Okay. Very good. All right. Anything else for the good of the cause? Birthdays, anniversaries, celebrations. Maggie. Maggie's in a boot, so she's up and about. So we're thankful for that. I would have liked to have seen you in crutches. How'd you do? She flying around. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How about that? Very good. They're adaptable, young ones. All right. Well, I have a I have a new hymn for you today, and I'm going to teach it to you. It's in your bulletin. The words are so freaking simple. They're right there on the back page. I'm going to sing it twice through, and then on the third time, I'm inviting you all to join, because it is that simple, and we're going to sing it three times together. 
So y'all can listen and follow the words, and it goes like this. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. The Lord our God is coming soon. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. The Lord our God is coming soon. Join me. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. The Lord our God is coming soon. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Oh, prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. The Lord our God is coming soon. Last time. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Oh, prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. The Lord our God is coming soon. Needs to. Good. Let me help you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and thanks be to God.